Oh, are we on the air? Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we're going to look at a match from 2016 and pick up quite a few tips from Efren here. Whether you're an 8-ball or a 9-ball player, there's a lot to be learned from this. Uh, Efren's opponent is a gentleman named Yukio Akuriana. In the early parts of this match, we're going to learn a lot about safeties. Uh, there's going to be a not really a safety battle, but a number of safeties played. And whether you're an 8-ball or 9-ball player, you really need to have this as part of your game. Uh, as we go on and look at different clips, we'll get into a lot more pattern identification and run-out strategies from Efren. So let's take a look. First thing you can pick up here, you've heard it again and again in many of my videos, you don't have to kill the balls to make a ball on the break, to have spread the balls out and to cover the three-point rule. And you can see that Efren has done all of those things, except he's left himself snookered. So what he's going to do here is push out. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with the push out rule because you have never played in a high level event or you're playing APA rules or something like that, the push out is uh, basically after the break, you don't have a shot as the breaker. You can literally put the cue ball anywhere you want without being charged a foul and your opponent has an option to either shoot or give it back to you. If he chooses to give it back to you, which is what's going to happen here, now you have to shoot and actually hit that ball. So you're basically baiting your opponent to do something that you're able to do that they might not be able to do. So Efren gave this a lot of thought. You know, Efren is the king of these angles here. Well, he's the king of a lot of things. So I speed up this video in a number of different places where the player has taken his time and really thought these out. So a mistake that a lot of players make when they push out and their opponent gives it back to them is they think that's their turn to make the ball. But that's not the case. It's your turn at the table. And a lot of times that turn should be used in a safety. And as you can see, Efren made another classic safety shot by playing that one ball, just cutting it enough to push it onto the short rail and getting the cue ball down to the other end of the table. If you don't have the ability to hide behind other balls, at the minimum, get your cue ball at one end of the table and the object ball to the other end of the table. Efren just happens to do both things, hide you and spread the balls out. Now what's about to happen here is very subtle and a lot of players would miss what's going on. Efren is not getting shape on that three ball in order to play it. He's getting shape on that three ball in order to play a safety. How many amateur players get shape on a ball to play safety on the next ball? You just never see it. They think they have a shot, they shoot their shot, and then they hope for the best. If you're not going to run out, play another safety. Improve the table for yourself and hide your opponent. Watch what happens here. He's going to play the three off of the nine. So he's just hitting the nine and then hiding behind those two balls that he was just scouting out. So this is just world-class play here. No intention on making the three ball, but the intention is to get that nine ball off the rail and get behind some other balls. So now when you get ball in hand, you have one less problem shot to worry about, which was the nine. Now what you're about to watch is just truly amazing. Efren's opponent, Yukio, is going to play a pretty decent safety here. He is going to separate the three ball and the cue ball and even hide Efren a little bit. But well into his 50s, Efren is still Efren. So what happens next is um, worth the price of admission. Yukio plays an incredible and dangerous safety just to separate those balls 
and I sped this up for you guys, but Efren takes his time and thinks about this and then turns Efren on the guy and plays this shot. Efren kicks the three ball into the side pocket, and now Efren is going to obviously have an easy run of the table. The way to win a safety battle is to be on the offensive side of the safeties. And what does that mean? Be the guy who's forcing the other guy to do something. And that's what Efren did through this entire rack. He almost got himself in bad shape when Yukio made that last play. But being Efren, he pulled it out, not just kicking the ball, but making it. So let's play out these last shots with Efren. He's going to shoot this with low left and do kind of a Z shot for position. The only problem here is if you overplay it and get tied up with that nine ball, you can see Efren is very excited to come to the spot where he wanted and then not overshoot it. And now he will shoot a draw shot off of this six to come off the rail to get shape on this seven ball. You can see how low he's hitting the ball. And also you should notice if you have to go back five seconds, notice how soft he hit that draw shot. You guys don't have to slam these balls to shoot those short little draw shots. And then here, it's pretty much a wrap. Efren will just tap this eight ball in with a little bit of stun and have perfect position on the nine, obviously. So a lot of things you can pick up from that first rack. When you get into that safety battle, be the guy that's forcing the hand of the other guy, not the guy that's reacting. So Yukio breaks, and even though he makes two balls, he does not satisfy the three-point rule. So now, even though he made two balls, it is Efren's turn at the table. Efren's going to make a little bit of an error here. So he's playing the two ball. He is going to carry him into the nine ball. He's looking to get shape on the three ball. So he wants to be on that far side of the three. But the cue ball travels a little too far, puts him on the wrong side. So Efren's going to make a move here that a lot of people would think Efren doesn't make. <laughs> but watch what happens here. He is actually going to play a little bit of what I call spray and pray. You get that three ball in the side pocket, you bang off a couple balls, and give it your best effort. And that's basically what he does here. He just hits that ball hard enough that maybe something good will happen. The table is so spread out, he anticipates he's going to be able to hit the four from somewhere. So why not give it a go? I know it seems contrary to some of the things we talked about earlier about playing safeties when you don't have a shot, but because the table is so empty, you know that you're a favorite to hit this four ball, and you know that you're a favorite to be able to play some type of safety if you can't hit the four on a makeable shot. So Efren just, like I said, just went after it, played a little spray and pray, and now got himself in a tight position, maybe should have played a safety on that three ball. The fact that he outclasses his opponent so much probably also had a lot to do with the last shot he took. I know it's very common when I'm playing, whether it's competition or friends and family, to take certain risk depending on who I'm playing and my ability to beat them in the long run. So this is early in the match, and Efren, I'm sure, assumes that even if he gets behind a game or two, he's going to be able to catch up and ultimately win the match. So it does not work out for him. He ends up leaving his opponent a shot, but he also did something that is very important. He left his opponent sitting down for quite a long time. So his opponent comes to the table, and now he's a little cold, and even though he has an opportunity to run out here, he's been sitting down a bit. And remember, being cold when you stand up and have to shoot is not about just making shots, but position. So even though he made that four ball, 
you can see he came up with lousy position on that five ball, which was not a difficult shot at all. Is it the result of sitting there so long and watching Efren shoot? Maybe, but either way, you're coming to the table cold. Just because you might make a shot doesn't mean that you're playing your A game after sitting there for all that time. It should also be noted that even though Efren leaves a lot of guys sitting in their chair while he runs rack after rack, that wasn't the case here. This is game two of the match, and yet Efren's opponent was sitting there for quite a while. So here he's got to play a kick shot and hope to hit this five ball and hope that something magical happens. But not being Efren Reyes, nothing magical happens, and he gives the ball back to Efren. Um, most of you are out from here. We can pretty much be assured that Efren is going to be out from here. So even when Efren made the major mistakes earlier, he came back with play that left his opponent a shot and still ends up winning the game. So you can say that his opponent broke down and gave the game to Efren as opposed to Efren winning this game. But there's another subtle thing that goes on. When you're playing well or you have a track record of playing well or being the greatest player ever, a lot of times people will come to the table with the intention of winning, but knowing deep down inside they're not supposed to win. Think Mike Tyson throughout 90% of his career. Guys came into the ring wondering which round they were going to get knocked out. So the two lessons you can learn from this are, one, if you're outclassed, just play against the table. Don't worry about your opponent. And two, if you're superior to the other player, you might be able to take more chances than you normally would. So, Yukio, Yukio is going to have a straight-in shot on his one ball and rattles it, probably because he's a little rattled, but it will come back and end up in the same pocket. I know some of you guys hate nine ball because of the luck involved, but in any game, including straight pool, that would have been a legal shot. So it ends up in the pocket he was intending. Here he is going to work on this um, two and need to get back down to the three. Of course, it looks like he did not have a really good plan, but he should have easy position on this three ball. And his run out here actually does not look too bad at all. He's, um, he's in a position where he can get decent shape on this four ball as long as he takes his time he should be able to shoot a follow shot here to get on the four. The five is at the other end of the table, so you want to leave yourself an angle on this four ball. But watch what happens. Number one, well, he makes two mistakes here. Number one, he lets himself get so close to that rail that a lot of his options are limited. Number two, it looks like he was playing position to get on the four, disregarding the five ball, which is all the way down table. You can't just get on the next ball. You have to get on the next three balls. You have to get on the whole table, by the way. So he does come up with a decent shot here, plays it with high right, but totally undershoots it. One of the things I teach guys is that there are undershots and overshots. What does that mean? It means that there are shots that you're not going to hit them perfectly. So you ask yourself, do I want to be over? Do I want to overshoot this or undershoot it since I'm not going to be perfect? And that'll help you judge what kind of speed you're going to put on the ball. So after a lot of thought, he comes up with an angle on this five ball, kicks at it and hopes for the best, and doesn't leave Efren the greatest of shots, but it's straight in. The problem is Efren is on the rail here, and he needs to get backup table to get shape on that six ball. So this is not a layup by any means, but Efren is going to queue up. He's two games ahead. 
He's going to play a nice follow shot here. Just enough to get past that eight and see the six ball from where he is. Now, that was actually a pretty advanced shot that Efren took. What he did was he shot a follow shot, not quite as high as you would normally shoot a follow shot, but about a tip, half a tip below. So in effect, he shot a stun shot with additional roll to it, and he totally let his stroke out, which is the reason you take that shot the way he did. Now, this is a great shot, and this is one of those things that a lot of the casual observers are going to miss. Efren is shooting down table with a standard deflection cue, most likely, with left-hand spin, so it's an eight-foot shot down table. Look how much left he has on this to come around and get shape on this seven ball. So look at the path of the cue ball. There is a little bit of draw. There's a little bit of a lot of left on this to get shape on this seven ball. And he did that eight feet down table, like I said, with probably a standard deflection cue. That is not a spectacular shot with a low deflection cue. It's still difficult, but with a standard deflection cue, it's insane. So after that great shot, Efren rattles the six ball. So after that great shot, Efren rattles the seven ball, and his opponent will be out from here with just a series of three layups. So we're only going to look at three games of this match here. I will at some point post the entire match for you guys if you'd like to see it. But make sure you check out some of our other videos and... Hit me in the comments. Let me know what you think of this. I know you guys enjoy this format, so I will keep it coming. Have a great day. And if you're not a subscriber, get on board. Talk to you soon.